Good morning, North America. Welcome to Church Talk TV, lively talk about life, church, and church life. I'm your co-host, Dr. Bill Tenney Britton, and I'm joined as usual by my co-host, Dr. Chris Tenney Britton, and we're broadcasting from our studio in Columbia, Missouri, the heartland of America. Say good morning, Chris. Well, good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome to Church Talk TV. Chris and Bill Tenney Britton here to talk about fairy tales. Well, not really, but sort of. <laughs> I, I love fairy tales. Uh, our grandson, our youngest grandson, the Grand Bébert, uh, and I were talking about fairy tales just the other day and paradigms and, and how many different, uh, how fairy tales tend to fit into just different categories. And I love the image that we use this week because it is about church growth, which is what we're talking about, a fairy tale. Oh, yeah, you know, by church the way. growth <laughs> is possible. But I, I, I went to um, chat GPT and I said, hey, make this image. I want, talk about mixed metaphors. I want an image yeah, of, <laughs> of old Mother Hubbard in her garden, kind of like Mary Mary quite contrary, um, with, with, a, with a watering, a watering um, can, watering a, a little church as if it was a flower. And there we are. So good old Mother Hubbard out doing her thing, talking about introducing, that, folks, it's not a fairy tale. It's church not. growth is possible. It, it, it would not only is it possible, it's happening. I really want to bring that home. Church growth is happening, and we're seeing it in the Growing Church Network, Absolutely. right? We're seeing it around, around the country, and people will often say, well, you know, show me. We, we, we live in Missouri, the show me state, right? So show me. And we hear that, right? Oh, show me. I, what, what stories do you have? Well, do we have stories? And, and, and you know, and, and as you say, all around the country, I was just thinking, okay, is that accurate? And it's like, yeah, we do have all around the country. But there we have Doug, who is um, in Indiana, okay. in a little town of less than 450. There you go. And he has, uh, he's almost ready to break the 100. He started with 30 less than a year ago. Okay, so and so he's on the way. And then we, got, wanna... and, well, then we got Linda. Who, oh, is, who is in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. So I mean, you want to talk about a very different culture. And she's broken the 100 air, um, barrier. Uh, barrier. And her bishop and her was having a conversation. The bishop said, yours, your is, yours is the only church in our synod that is doing sustainable growth. Okay. Wow. Okay. So, so all right. So well, it does happen. So yeah, you know, there's not a fairy tale. There's a plug for the Growing Church Network while we're at it. I don't know that we started that way, but no, we're, we're going to take it, take it there for sure. And to say that church growth is possible, whether you have a small church or a larger church. Um, we grew a house church network out of just, I mean, a, a little, little small group of people. Uh, we saw lives being transformed and changed. Up and down, uh, Washington, I five California, border, we called it. yeah, right, Oregon, and and even into was it New Mexico? I think was yep. it's next Mexico and Togo. And Togo, oh yeah, that how could I forget yeah, Togo? Yeah, right. Togo. So I mean, and still have people contact us from different parts of the country that were linked to that because they may have a question or something that they're trying to do. That's right. So we watch it on different levels, different sizes. We're excited to talk to you about this church growth not being a uh, a fairy tale, and it's possible for you and your congregation. So I want to start off by talking about some, some large church myths. You know, one of the things when we talk to small church pastors, and let's be honest, we work with big church pastors and small church pastors, but there's a lot more little churches than there are big churches, so we end up talking we to talk a lot more smaller yeah. church pastors than we talk with larger church pastors. And when we talk to um, smaller church pastors, we get a lot of pushback about, well, we can't compete, you know, the big church and, you know, da da And so I just want to start off with, with some large church myths that I want to break. Um, I want to talk about some things that do not grow churches in and of themselves. Don't get me wrong. What I'm going to share, all these things help, but they will not grow the church just because you say, let's, let's give this a try. Okay. So I want to say this before you, you, we do this. Okay. And that is to say to you, church is not a competition. Okay. We're all in this together and we each bring our gifts. We each bring our strengths. We each have our particular foci uh, or focus, hopefully that comes together with all the other churches, uh, individual focus, and then foci as, as a whole. And so you shouldn't be competing with the other churches. It's not a competition. And, and, and on Focus. top of that, and on top of that, there's enough people out there who are not going to church to go around. <laughs> yeah, and we criticize the other churches. Oh my gosh, it just kills me. We they're doing this, they're doing that, we're doing that. And then meanwhile, what are we doing? Nothing but complaining about them. So listen up, y'all. All right. So number one is it one the myth that grows churches is having the best show in town. Folks, um, probably no one woke up last Sunday morning in your town and stretched. 
oh, if I could just find a church that had the best show in town, I'd go. People don't go to church for that. Now, don't get me wrong, a great show, a great worship set, and a pastor who is confident in the pulpit and bringing a good biblical message, that's all helpful. Don't get me wrong, that biblical message is critical for everybody. And that will very possibly but, get people to come back. But, right, but, right. but, it doesn't but, necessarily grow not the, necessarily. It won't, it won't necessarily grow the church. Right. You know, you, you hang up this banner that says, hey, we got the best show in town. Yeah, not growing the church. So speaking of the best show in town, it's not about the lights and the, you know, hurrah and the, the smoke snack. machine. Yeah, yeah all I, that. I, I, that I, if we just yeah. had the smoke machine, we'd grow our church. <laughs> yep, yep, he knows what he's talking about here. Okay, it's not about the, the music, the contemporary music, whether the band uh, is really great or not. I, I, I'm, I've said this before, and, and it's similar. I went to a church several years ago when I still thought, oh, wow, it's all about the show and everything. And I wanted to see why they were growing. They had, an, um, they had really remarkable numbers in, uh, in the amount of people that were adults that were being baptized that were coming into the faith. And I went there and the band was mediocre at best. The minister was not the greatest preacher, but he was really transparent and he was just like there with his people. And that's, that's what caught my, my attention was the transparency and the clarity and the genuineness, if you will, of the worship service, not the big showy, flashy And they had, they had a kick butt discipleship program. Oh my word, <laughs> did they ever. They so, sure as heck did. Okay, all right, so, but, so, no, but no one woke up for whether it's contemporary music or country music or jazz music right. or traditional music. No one, again, woke up and said, if I could just find the kind of music I want to go to, I'd, I'd find that church. Or, or because or, I, I think there might be some who was, if they were looking at um, different churches that were doing any kind of marketing or if they were doing a Facebook search or whatever, might say, oh, yeah, let's go to that one because they have country country music Cowboy going music. on. Cowboy music. Okay. So, but I don't think a church would say, well, let's not go to that one because they're doing... Um, People wouldn't go to that church. Right, people, right. no, but I, I don't think there are people who would wake up and say, well, I'm not going to that church this morning because they do organ music, right? right? You know what I'm saying? So they might say, oh yeah, I, 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 let's, let's try that one, that country right. music church, but I can't believe but, they'd say, I'm not going to a country but, music but, church. And, and, and no argument with any of that with, with this caveat is that anyone who wakes up thinking that, they're, already, they're, already, they're actually actively church shopping. Yeah, know. that's true. Okay, that's and true. so I'm we're talking you. about people right. who are not church shopping. Yeah, you know, yeah. Don't want to okay. wake up and say, okay. ah. all right. Okay, oh, now I understand what you're saying. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. So another another ministry that does not grow churches is youth ministry. Yeah. You know, it, it, I, I get this all the time. Well, the, the first hire we need to have is a small church. We need to hire a youth minister because, you know, all the churches in town that are big have a youth ministry. Folks, no self-respecting youth on this planet ever brought their parents to anything. That's part of the that's part of what the growing up process is is to separate from parents. And I say not any self-respect. I know some there churches have great discipleship programs teaching children how to bring their or get youth, the children. I mean, right? Well, but youth, by, youth. But by and large, okay. youth yep. don't tend to yeah. bring. Their parents right. and and youth ministry. It, don't get me wrong. If you have youth in your church, go for it. You have to have a youth ministry. You have to you have to disciple them, etc. On a level but they don't understand. Think, but don't think that going out and hiring a youth pastor is going to grow your church because it probably won't. Well, a big, big, you know, it, it, it may mm -hmm. grow you some youth, right? But it probably will not grow you the families. Well, in conversely, your church isn't growing because you don't have. I mean, that's what you're saying. Your church right. isn't not isn't growing. Is it not growing because you don't have a youth program? There it is. All right. So one one last one that I want to say, and and that is, marketing, marketing the church. Hey, y'all come to church. Um, that doesn't help. Now here's or doesn't grow church. I saw that just this morning right. on a Facebook post I just saw. Um, so all those things have the best show in town: contemporary music, youth ministry, marketing the church. None of those in and of themselves grow the church. But I want to say one thing: they all help. If you got good marketing, it's helpful. You got a good youth program, it's helpful. You got a great contemporary band or country, or country music or jazz band, or jazz, traditional music, traditional. you know, whatever that, that helps. Um, the best show in town, it helps. But none of those, and here's here's why we're saying this is because so many small churches we know say, well, we're going to start a youth program. We're going to start. Well, all we need is a praise band. If we could just get some cool lights and a sound system, that, you know, that none of that is the, the basis for why people go to church. And there's this general misunderstanding 
that people go to church to be entertained. You know, no one really, very few. Okay, I won't there say no people. one. Yeah, there are those who go, okay? But they're a tiny minority, and they drop off pretty quickly. They don't keep going to the big churches because they got a great show. Eventually, it's like, eh, whatever. Unless, Unless. okay, I mean, they don't, they don't stop going Unless there's the discipleship, well, if that's, there's that's the connecting, what I'm saying. If yeah, they because stay, if, if they stay yeah. as they because they're, if they're yeah. going there to be entertained, they'll drift away and, unless they get discipled. And let's be real. That's the I'd goal. be willing to say that the majority of large churches have all of that in place. Oh, absolutely. They, and, and I'm not saying right. that they have all of the smoke and what is it called? Whistles and whatever Bells and it whistles. is. Bells, whistles, and smoke. I, I, I'm not saying they have all of that because there are churches that churches are very, that very, very, right. very, very traditional in their settings, classical in their settings, but they're connecting and discipling and sending people. It is a four a, a four core process, and they're doing it. They've and got we'll it. We'll talk about that later. Yes, we in will this talk. Episode, and we, and, in this episode, yeah, and we talk about it in other places and everything else. Right. But we, that's what we want you to hear. It's not that the large churches are uh, are um, are staying large because they're this big entertainment. They've got the rest of the pieces in place. And those those pastors and those church people who were throwing rocks metaphorically, at the large church because while their, their ministry is shallow and all that, they really don't understand. They, they don't know what they're talking about. They, yes, They've never there been are, there. Yeah, right. And there's, there are a few of those churches, but they're few and far between. We've worked with mega churches across the United States. Um, and to be fair, I have yet to actually have worked with one of those churches that didn't have an incredible discipleship program that wasn't bringing people. The goal was they had a great show, but the goal was to connect them into small groups and into their discipleship um, plan. Right. They had a process to bring people in. Um, those churches that are large tend to be large because they do a lot right. So let's let's, let's move into. Going. I want to yeah, talk about the going. six reasons. We've told you why you don't people don't come to church. So let's tell you why church. people why people do the six reasons that. The people who are um, unchurched, and what's the word you use? Yeah, um, no, not yet Christians, NYC, because you know everybody is a prospective Christian if they're right. not. So a not yet Christian and a no longer Christian, those who've left the faith. Because the, these are the unchurched, and there's two great groups. And yep. There's the nuns and the duns and the ums and all that. But I like what she's saying is you know that the, they're, they're not yet Christians, or they've kind of they've wandered away from Christianity or the the faith. Um, and so what are the reasons why they go to church? And we want to give you six reasons. And, and we've, we've racked our minds. We can't find any other reasons. There might be. But Tell these us, are the please. Pri- yeah, but these are the primary reasons why someone who is outside of the church would go, I need to go to church. And number one is, I love this. The unicorn. Yeah, unicorn and rainbows. Okay, so the unicorn is a, is a relatively new, newish term, at least in our in our world. Okay. Um, a, a unicorn is, in, by definition here, is one of those people who moved into your town, and they happen to be the same brand as, as you, and they are committed to the brand. They go, ah, I need to go to that church, or maybe it's the closest church and whatever. But they they are. One in a hundred, you know. They're brand, they're brand loyal, right? They're right. Brand loyal. I, mean, that, those, I think that's very few of those anymore, right? That, that's true, but there are brand loyal right. people, Absolutely. and I and I talk to them and I meet them um, uh, right. all the time, right? And, right. And but they're the unicorns that show up, you know. And what I what happens is one of these unicorns show up, they they prove the that the consult the consultant doesn't know what he's talking about. Hey, we got people coming in. Yeah, a very small number. Can you grow your church with that number? Probably not. There's not very many unicorns in your city or moving into your town to grow the, that'll grow your church. Okay. So the second one, we're going to just kind of pass right, over yeah, on yeah, these because yeah. you know this, uh, is that they, they come on the arm. They come because you have invited them uh, to come with you. So and that's... They, and they come because of, in general, in this particular six, they, they come because of one or two reasons. Number one, you've invited them and they feel like they owe you in some way. Oh. <laughs> you know, they, they, they come because of friendship. They come because they maybe there's a special event and you've invited them, whatever. But they're coming because of a relationship and they're maintaining that relationship. That, it, it, again, not bad. Right. And it, it also may be for one of the four unsolvable reasons, which are problems we're going to share in a minute. Right. Um, and you've invited them to to solve that problem. But in the top two reasons, 
inviting them and they're, they come because they're a friend is another reason. Okay, and we're going to touch on this as, as we get to the end, but I do want to say you, you've heard us use this, uh, if you've been with us this term, if you've been with us at all, and uh, you're going to hear it in just a, a few moments, uh, and that is the word uh, or the term neighborhood missionaries. People, this is on the arm. This right. is neighborhood missionarying. This is uh, getting to know the people in your neighborhood uh, at or, work, or, and at work, work, right, et cetera, et cetera. Wherever. Right, wherever you uh, have acquaintances and don't need to be friends, but acquaintances that are moving into friendship or friends, and they will come with you on, uh, on the arm. Or family. family, yeah, right. family, family re relatives, well. right? right? I mean, friends, relatives, associates, uh, neighbors, neighbors co workers, co -workers and, and everyone, everyone else. else. That's there, the, there that's it is. word friends, friends, by the way. All right, so those are the, the two reasons why, the general reasons, but there's four reasons why someone may show up at your church who is, they're not a unicorn, and no one invited them. They show up because they're desperate, because they are suffering from one of four unsolvable problems. And when I say unsolvable, yeah. they're unsolvable in our, in our <laughs> understanding them, yeah. outside of Jesus Christ. Yes, okay? yes, 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 yes. So, so these are the four, and these are critically, write these down, because these are important. Number one, they have a hurt, hurt they, they cannot, cannot heal. heal. Okay, and, and that, 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 it could be any number of hurts. The hurts can be, they have, a, they have an addiction. The hurt can be they've just lost a spouse or their, their kid has disowned them. or But there's some hurt and they just can't get over it. Maybe something happened in the deep past. It may be guilt. It may be shame. But there's something that just aches at them and they need healing. And they hope, they pray that they'll find that healing at the church. And so they make their way. Often it's the last resort. We have yeah. a, a really good example when we started the, the Rock Christian Church in um, in the, the Seattle area. We had a gal, um, Cheryl, who was who was, had a serious addiction problem, um, had tried everything. She'd done the 12-step stuff and all the rest. And she, she called us and said, I'm willing to give God a chance. And that was the reason she showed up because she had this hurt that she could not heal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I thought you were gonna say Janet, who was another one that but, Janet called out of clear blue and said, I, I, her, she lived in hell, literally, and her life was a nightmare and had been since she'd been a child. And she said, you know, I've tried everything, I've done everything, drugs aren't working, and um, and uh, uh, I hear this Jesus is, does miracles, so okay, here I am, do your miracle. Folks, there are people in your community who have a hurt they can't heal and they, they're looking for an opportunity, but they may not know that the church has those kind of resources, that the church is dealing with that. So, you know, this is one way of reaching into a segment of the, of the population and offer hope. Yeah, no, okay, as you're saying that, it's like, don't don't try to be everything to everybody. Right. You know, like as we're talking, maybe there's something that says, oh yeah, okay, I can kind of connect to that. I can, uh, that, that resonates with me in some way. We also want you to know what the people who are showing up that may show up on your doorstep or in your narthex. Uh, okay, anyway, so the Never second reason word. is, that's, I know, the fourth four reason, word. right, okay. is... Uh, or the second, and, second unsolvable like, wait, wait, problem. Yeah, unsolvable is an emptiness they cannot fill. You know, it's been said that we each have a God, um, God, a God shaped side hole. hole. God shaped hole. Oh, shaped hole. I thought it was a God sized no, hole. God shaped hole. Okay. And that goes well, all we the have way back this to a hole. mathematician. Yes. Okay. Well, there was also a theologian along the way. Anyways, that there is this hole inside of us in our spirit, and we try to, to fill it with cars and money and food and, and alcohol and, and sex and, and people right. and on and on. But nothing's going to fill that hole. There's only the one who can fill that hole. Oh. And and so there's this deep, deep emptiness. And again, that final uh, people may finally say, I hear or I've heard. I'm willing to give it a try. Or they may not even know that they're empty. Right. They may, they're may they just searching. And maybe they've heard that word church or Jesus or something somewhere, and they meander into your door. Or they see that you're, you're offering a, a solution to whatever problem they feel like they're, which we're going to talk about in yeah, a Yeah, I was going to say, so it kind of sounds the, like that's a, the next the, un, the four unsolvable problems, you know, a, 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 a savvy church. Um, let's people know we're there to solve your problems. Okay, number three. Right, three. Okay, is they have a question they can't answer. And, you know, those questions may smack of theo theology, but 
no one lost sleep last night, probably on this planet, going, man, I just, I can't sleep because I don't understand the Trinity. That's not a problem that people are, are wrestling with. The questions that, they're, that they're, they can't find answers to are, why did my, why did my mom who was only 52, die of cancer, and she had given her life as, as a, the paragon of goodness and Jesus and all the rest, and yet she died. I, I, I don't understand, and I don't understand. Uh, well, I'm going to give you a, just a very recent, like on Sunday, ex, um, question that I, I'm, I'm seeing a young right. person. There's um, a senior in college who showed up in church, on Sunday and um, and got to talking with them about... Then was it her? I know. Well, okay. I was trying to kind of leave her a little bit um, anyways. She wouldn't <laughs> be watching this anyways. About, so. Okay. <laughs> well, okay. Anyways, I talked to her and a uh, senior in college and um, and I said, oh, oh, so, you know, what are you saying? She tells me and, uh, you know, where are you within your program? She's a senior. She's, you know, finals are in a week. And, um, and I said, so what's next, you know? Um, and she said, well, I haven't heard back. I'm, I'm trying to get into grad school. And so what are you gonna do? She's got a question, what's next, right? So is, what if I don't get into grad school is a possibility? Uh, is, uh, am I gonna go like, you know, she's got a couple other thoughts that she's thinking, do I go get a job? But, and then she says, well, really, she has this incredible dream. And she says, everybody says it's impossible. I said, well, quite honestly, it sounds like a PhD dissertation project and um, that there could be grants out there for you to get to, to make it happen, you know? But she has these questions and she's got, you know, people saying, you know, you can't do things, which I think are part of our questions. So where might possibilities be fulfilled? In the church. She's gone back to what she, where she hasn't been for I don't know how long. Um, maybe ever, because she's got a question. You know, and this, this is where meaning is often a place, it, it, too. Yes, it What's really is meaning questions of life? and my, meaning. My, my, kids, my kids have left the house, right. and I'm having an empty nest. I don't, know, I don't know what to do with my life now. Right. Or I've lost my job, and you know, or I'm coming to the end of my college career, or the right. first part, and I don't know what's next. So right. there's a question they can't answer, and when the church says, we have... We can help you find that answer. People are like, eh, okay. So. Or help you, yeah, help you find, help you search for it. You know, hey, you're okay to have questions. Right, yeah, it's okay yeah, to have okay. questions. That's right. So, all right. So the fourth one is they have an itch that they can't scratch. And this is, your, you're the expert on this one. I mean, you know, the that, that's kind of how you end up in church is that what you knew, what you came to know, and okay, I'm telling her story, is that, you know, yeah, when, so when, sure when she was outside you. of the church, she was like, um, uh, one Sunday morning woke up and there's this, this it she couldn't scratch. She, could, yeah, this. Are you, are you, are you, okay, <laughs> like, are you, are you, you gonna tell their story? And I'm like, well, yeah, well, I'm okay. Trying to get you on track, so now yeah, tell the story. Okay. All right. right. So I, I, I think of myself as a unicorn, corn, in a way, because like brand loyalty and everything. And the only so, time so you were a Presbyterian, I know, with the I know. Church, but, but, know but, 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 but when my aunts, my dad, my yeah, we became atheists when I was ten. But my my aunts would come to town. They would take us to the Methodist church. They yeah. were Methodists. So yeah. I mean, there's that kind of thing. But the reason I went was because this little voice in my head today, I know it's the Holy Spirit, but this little voice in my head kept saying, "Go to church, go to church, go to church," which was absolutely ridiculous. And to me, you put a dress on, I had stolen, well, I didn't really steal it. I borrowed a dress about three years earlier, but just never returned it. So I put that dress on, I went to church, and the minister that morning was berating the congregation, everything you don't do, because they were not involved, and a kid down the street had tried to commit suicide. And you know, the bottom line is I met the man of my dreams in that church that morning. It, it was Jesus. Me. No, <laughs> okay. it wasn't him. But I mean, that's where my life turned around. Right. He, the minister spoke uh, about having a messed up kid, uh, you know, being, and I was a messed up young adult, and it moved me on from there. So that's a whole other episode, a whole other but, story, but, it, but, it, but there it was, was itch. Itch. It's something. That Just she something had to, right. couldn't keep me from going to church that morning. Okay, so there's six reasons why people go to church, all right? They're, 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 they're unicorn. You kind of, and also, you know, but someone, brand loyalty, they come on the arm because someone invited a neighborhood missionary. Then they have four, they have a problem, one of these problems, the hurt they can't heal, an emptiness they can't uh, fulfill or fill, a question they can't answer, or an itch they can't scratch. Now, knowing those problems will not grow your church. It's good to know those problems, but if you're going to grow your church, there's some basics, and this is, if you will, this is Church Growth 101 that we want to move into in the time we have left. So, so, so Church Growth 101, 
101, um, you know, you want to grow your church, solve people's problems. Okay. This, this not in a one. code of number one. number one. It's not in some codependent way, but it's to be preaching to that, to be offering uh, classes on that, to events. To events. Oh yeah. Events on that. Solve their problems. Look at, listen to what people are saying, right? Outside of the church. Outside of the church. Outside of the church. The the weather is turning nice out there. Go to the park. If you've got a mall, a shopping center, someplace where people gather, go there and listen. What are people talking about? Listen to to what people are saying, uh, you know, before and after church. What are the problems? Look at your, look at your data. It's not on the news. Okay. I mean, so often I get, I hear pastors, well, this is the news. No, go talk to the people in your community, not what the media has decided is important. Go talk, you know, you're talking about places to go. You know, if, if, you, if you're if you targeting young adults, you want to go hang out with, with the, um, at school, um, after school e- events with the parents there. It's, uh, there's lots uh, of just places. Just talk to, talk to people. Yeah, talk to your, talk to your principal of the school near you. Don't go to the, I'm sorry, don't go to the head of the school, right? The superintendent. superintendent. Go to talk to the principal. Or the teachers. Or, 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 or the teachers. Or the, there are home school coordinators and the home school coordinator would love to talk to you. The outreach, uh, outreach counselor would love to talk to you. Go talk to them. Wh- They're going to tell you what the and problems whoever your are. Target, whoever your target audience is, go talk to someone outside the church from those t- and listen to what, what are people losing sleep over and figure out how you can do sermon series that will help them solve the problem. Once you've done that, once you know what you're going to be preaching, once you know the events you're going to do, um, et cetera, to help people solve those problems, then you got to get the word out. Yeah, too. You know, so, so often we, 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 we create these wonderful sermon series and never tell anyone. You know, so you could advertise on social media, you can advertise in the newspaper if you're reaching senior adults, um, et, et cetera. But here's the best way is get your people, turn them into your, your members, into neighborhood missionaries and get them inviting, not to come to church. No one wants to go to church, but inviting people to come have that problem solved. Hey, you know, this upcoming sermon series is going to be on how to repair a, a um, fractured marriage. Who do you know that has a fractured marriage? Oh, I know someone like that. And in, your people will have something to invite them to. Hey, Bob, Mary, I heard, you know, I know you're struggling. And, um, you know, I, we, we, the pastor's talking on this for the next four weeks. We'd love to have you come. I love what you just said. People don't want to come to church, but sermon series. They so, want their problem uh, solved. right, they want their problem solved, which is really okay. So, when you hear him say they don't want to, the people don't want to come to church, well, they don't want to come to church for church's sake. They want to, they want, there, there's a reason that you go, why are you going to give up not just an hour, an hour and a quarter, hour and a half of your morning? Because I had to get up and put makeup on on Sunday morning, okay? When I had to put makeup on, it's not a day off generally. So, you know, that was a little bit of time. It doesn't take nothing, it's no time to get this together. You know, and you had to get dressed, you know, lay out your clothes. Then there was, you know, rush, rush, and for some of us kids getting them ready. It, it, what makes it worth it. What, why is there? Okay. So solve people's problems, get the word out that you solve people's problems. Don't forget your hospitality and follow up. We talk about that all the time. Right. And, and, and yet so often churches, people show up and they, they don't come back. Why? Poor hospitality. Number one reason people don't come back. And number two is there's no follow-up. No one felt like they were they they were wanted, needed, or even noticed. I noticed that on uh, Sunday too about this person who had come, and there were several people who talked to them that day. Uh, this this last Sunday, nobody was talking to them right. yep. until I went over there right. because he guilted me into it. <laughs> Whatever but, it takes. Okay. Yeah, All right, right. So hospitality and follow-up are critical. Third, uh, number four is transformative discipleship. And please know I chose that word very carefully because we have a lot of churches doing discipleship programs that is discipleship um, in disguise as Christian ed. Christian education does not make disciples. Christian ed is important. Please hear me. We need to have the stories and all that, but it doesn't transform lives. Right. What transforms lives is behavior changes. Um, and reading a quarterly, et cetera, does not change lives. So transformative discipleship, small groups to transform lives, et cetera. Oh, I'm loving the church where we um, we most okay. often 
Where I'm a member and you attend. Right, where I attend. (laughs) uh, That we go there. I mean, just this past Sunday, I heard the minister say again, we're about transformation. We're about spiritual formation and life transformation. And I can guarantee you that your life will be different at the end of this year if you'll work in, uh, if you'll plug into what we're offering here, what that we have a lot of things they've gone over. They had a handout. Uh, they don't usually have handouts, but they had a handout uh, Sunday that had different um, options, possibilities that are coming up there. They're pointing you to people uh, on and on and on because we're about spiritual formation, life transformation. Your life will be different at the end of the year. I love that. There we are. Obviously. And the last part of how to grow a church is prepare and deploy neighborhood missionaries. You know, the the bottom, a neighborhood missionary is, you know, your members. We're all called to go. Go ye into all the world. And really that's a rather lousy translation. Go ye into all people groups. And we now have people groups all over your neighborhood. You know, people next door is a different people group than the people across the street and so on. And we need to prepare <laughs> our members to be neighborhood missionaries that get out there, know how to share the faith, yeah. know how to build relationships, right. and know how to people how to invite people not to church, but to have a transformative experience with Jesus that helps them solve the life life's unsolvable problems that are unsolvable without Jesus. Yeah. I love it. Guess what? We're out of time. We're out of time, and there's no way of getting around and solving that except to say... We'll see you next week. Have a great week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.